she's Ms. Hot Pink, poet, MC, comedian, actor, social commentator, TV presenter, voiceover <laughs> artist, improviser, wedding celebrant, and all round show off, really, yes. I think. Uh, plus the star of her latest one woman musical. Please welcome to the cafe, Penny Ashton. Yes! Hey, thank you very much. Thank uh, you very first much. up, we must say, this month's North and South yes, magazine. Can you me. see that? It's my subtle costume, you can see there. It is yeah. very subtle. And actually, that's my, my leftover wedding dress fabric. Really? I had oh. quite a lot left over, and I thought, let's make that my costume. So you definitely weren't the traditional getting married in white no, kind of a gown, No white, you? no white That was me. never going to happen. No. Um, I was going to ask you about the marriage celebrant thing. Yep. How long have you been doing that for? I've been doing that for about four years, and it's delightful. Everybody's happy, you get wine, it's the best job. Why did you start that? Um, well, as, as a performer in New Zealand, you may notice there were a lot of things on my CV there. You need to be able to do lots of things to pay your rent. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So true. So, yeah, so I went to a wedding. Pinky Agnew was a fantastic celebrant in Wellington, and I saw her do it a number of years ago, and I thought, I could do this. And so then I have been doing it for that, and I love it. But you, you struggled, didn't you? Because you applied a few times, and they kept rejecting you, saying that you didn't have the qualifications. That's right. I applied nine times in 12 years. Wow. Well, yeah. what are the qualifications? Because I know a lot of ex-radio people, or yes. older radio people, they start celebrating well, weddings. Well, it, was, it wasn't so much qualifications qualifications as it was um, red tape. <laughs> it was sort of different criteria and they said I didn't fulfil it but I kept coming back because they had screwed with the wrong girl. Uh, <laughs> I was kind of like, this is happening. So I just kept going and proved my tenacity. There's How no skeleton. Yeah, there's no skeletons in your closet that no, we don't know no, about. No, no, no. I had nice references though. I did have references from Labour Party candidates so that could have been a problem. Ah, right, yeah, probably the but wrong I don't think time so, but that, of the year. Yeah. But they've relaxed a little bit now and they're, and they're great so I don't want to diss them because they've been really good. Yeah, it's, it's um, too late you already have. So yeah. you, got, you got your licence. Um, I do. do you do wacky weddings? Like, what's the most strangest one you've the done? The strangest one I've done was a Game of Thrones wedding. Right, oh. I said, I know I'm Penelope the Matrimonial, and here we are. Which I thought, Game of Thrones wedding. Lots of bad things happen in Game of Thrones. Wouldn't that be a good idea? <laughs> yeah, but it was delightful. Anyone? Everyone got dressed up. It was a lot of fun. You usually get married in Game Slice of Thrones, off. and then, yes, you're dead. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> but for the Weird most thing. part, it's just sort of straight, but with a um, you know humorous approach to their lives. And I write a new ceremony every time all about their lives. Because I don't like coming away from a wedding having no sense of who they are. Yep. Right. So that's my whole thing, is that everybody knows who they are. Gosh, them. you'd be a great wedding celebrant. Yeah, okay, thanks. right, you're also a great performer. I forgot that you can sing quite well as well. So tell us about this new show that you're doing. So um, I spent the last four years touring a one-woman Jane Austen musical mm. called Promise and Promiscuity, and I've done it over 200 times in about six countries, Gosh. and that went quite well, but I thought I need to do something new, and so I thought Charles Dickens is like a natural sort of progression. So um, what it is is I've read uh, some of... I like to say I've read all of his movies. Because <laughs> uh, <laughs> he's quite dense, so, but I have read... He's a, quite a dense. Of, yeah, not, well, yes, not I get what you mean. Yes, yes. Loquacious. Yeah. Loquacious, <laughs> darling. So I've read a lot of that, but I've watched a lot of it and sort of just, uh, you know, osmosed his sort of um, feel. We also did an improvised Dickens with a, my group called Con Artists. We do improv. And um, and that was just a lot of fun. And so then I took... What I do is I write a brand new story, though. Right. So it's a story of uh, Olive Copperbottom, who is an orphan. You know, she um, she ends up with a group of travelling players. She ends up with the prostitutes. You know, Fanny Purchase is the prostitute. Fanny Purchase. Fanny Purchase. Mm. Uh, yes, the pub, nice. the local pub, which is two birds, of course, is the cock and swallow. Uh, <laughs> and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> so you, so you, you play 13 characters and you play them all. Can yeah. you give us a little sample of some of them? Yeah, so Olive is sort of, you know, very, very nice. Often the sort of the leads and Dickens are kind of boring. And then there's Mrs. Sour Tar, who's like, remember, you are illegitimate and it would have been far, far better that you had never been born. That's and a fun one. Thank yeah, she's she's my favourite. And, um, you know, there's li little orphans who talk like this. I've got Tommy Tidbit is his name. And uh, then we've got Mrs. Sozzle, who runs the cock and swallow. Who's having the meat pie surprise? And the surprise is, there ain't no meat. <laughs> um, that, that sort of thing. And, yeah, I've got Mrs. Make sure brand is a terrible Scottish accent, but I do it anyway. Oh, it's uh, a lot better than Mike's Scottish accent. <laughs> right, I can't do yeah, that's, that's a superb one. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. must be exhausted after doing that. Yeah, well, I have, I have yet to do it. My first show is in the 18th at the basement <laughs> studio upstairs, and yes, I think so. Particularly with this, because there's songs and like there's an orphanage song that's lots of dancing, and you know we're all together in the orphanage. So all the music is uh, classical pieces or traditional pieces. Right. So that's the sailors' hornpipe. So it's like when Mama drops dead and Papa does too. Another your family. Once you, there's a place you'll be sent care of the government. We're all in this together at the orphanage. Oh, so you got a full, a full touring schedule ahead of you. So what's happening? Where are you going? What are you um, doing? Yeah, as I say, 18th of April at the basement studio, and then on the 9th of May I open at Circa Theatre in Wellington, where I did my show last year, and it was great. Then I'm going to Toronto, Winnipeg, Edmonton, Calgary. Wow. Uh, and then I'm taking my Jane Austen show to the uh, cabaret festivals in Adelaide and Brisbane, and then I'm doing a UK tour and doing my first London dates. Oh, it's exciting! Wow. 
Jane. Oh. With the Jane Austen show at the end of the year. You certainly don't hang around resting, do you, or anything like no, that? No, that's no, right. no, I don't. I don't you, own a house like that. <laughs> you I live are in fantastic. Auckland. Best Thanks. of luck for that tour. Thank you very I'm much. I'm sure people will go out and see it and Joe's for more details on Penny's show or how she can be booked as a celebrant. Check out her website. Thank you very much, Thank you Penny. Very much. Okay. Okay. Thank you.